What's up, watch friends? Welcome to another episode of Talking Time Pieces with Tony. I'm Tony. This is my watch for the day, uh, or my watch for ever, but I'm just uh, wearing it today. My Rolex GMT 126710 BLNR Batgirl Batman GMT. Awesome. Anyway, uh, today we are going to do, uh, last week we didn't do an episode of the Magic Watch Ball. Magic Watch Ball, for those of you who don't know or if you're a new viewer, um, just about every Friday we do a Q&A and it's fun. It's just a lighthearted sense of humor. Now, a lot of people in this industry seem to think they have the, the crystal ball then they say they don't have a crystal ball. Well, I don't have a crystal ball, but you know what I think is going to happen is this and then all that stuff. So I have a Magic Watch Ball. It is accurate 79% of the time. 79%, 60% of the time. Anyway, uh, so we have fun with it. So we'll roll the intro and then uh, we'll get into the questions. Alrighty then, so we have the watch ball. We have the first question that comes from Gregory Enright. Tony, love the videos. How long do you think it will take for a VIP client to get one of the new Rolex releases? Maybe that's a question for the watch ball. Anyway, have a great weekend. So this was uh, sent to me last weekend. So Gregory, I hope you have a good weekend too. I appreciate you that you uh, love my videos. So uh, how long will it take to get the new Rolexes uh, if you're a VIP client? Should be towards the end of the year, if not the beginning of the following year, 2024. And that's it. Um, okay, so I chime in my part here. You didn't really state which one you're interested in, you know, I mean, because it could be, depending on which model, you know, date just maybe flying out right now and, you know, the ADs have them. Um, so generally when a Rolex release a new watch, it tends to hit the ADs in more in the latter part of the year so you, you about seven eight months after the release um, I can't speak for all ADs you know I don't know what it's like for the ADs in Switzerland or um, anywhere else but I, I know that with my AD uh, Bindi Jewelers uh, they start getting the new Rolexes around November December um, after the, the release so Hopefully soon, and if you're a VIP customer, hopefully you will be picking one up, and hopefully it'll be a good one. They're all good, but uh, hopefully you've got something that you're really looking to get. Um, I know I am looking for a new one as well, uh, and I will gladly wait till the end of the year to get it. Um, cool. Thanks, man. Thanks for the comment. Um, this comes from Metagirl. Um, Okay, so this wasn't really specifically geared towards the watch ball. Sometimes the questions are just geared towards me and I don't have to ask the watch ball. But uh, in this case, Metagirl is basically saying Patek, Philippe, and Rolex uh, are opening a boutique right next to each other or is in combination with each other in San Francisco. Um, and I can't remember the name of the street, but apparently it was a, it's a high-end street. It would have to be. You know, you know, you're never going to see Rolex open a, a boutique and, you know... Pacoima, you know, South Central LA, you know, but that's just the way it is. Um, and she seems to think that that Rolex and Patek are, are partnering up. And I just sort of basically had answered that previously and said, they're not. Um, Rolex don't own their boutiques. They're all third party. Um, Patek so much, I think the same thing. Um, and it's probably just, they're going to be selling Rolex and Patek. But the question um, is, strange question it's not a strange question by the way um why does rolex have a boutique when they presumably don't have any inventory to sell so why are they opening this boutique if they're not selling any watches you know where these people like you know people that go into rolex and can't get rolex boutiques or authorized dealers and can't get watches the thing is is they do have watches and they're going to have watches all ad's have watches in stock they're just not selling them directly you know, okay I have to really be careful how I how I say this because I have to Rolex boutiques authorized dealers do have a certain supply of Rolex in stock. They can't just sell them to anyone who walks in there's lists, you know, all this stuff. We all know how difficult it is. 
But having said that, this I guarantee you that this Rolex boutique that's going to open up is going to have some stock. What are they going to have? Are they going to have Daytonas and and GMTs, Yacht Masters, um, the new you know day date puzzle? Uh, I doubt it. I doubt it very much. But they will have, you know, I'm sure they'll have some standard date justs, things like that. Maybe an Explorer, maybe Air Kings. I don't know. But they will have stuff in there. It just doesn't necessarily mean you can go in. It'll just be like any other AD. You can't just walk in and buy something. They're gonna, they're, they'll figure out a way how they're gonna do it. I don't know because I don't live up there, and I am not going to visit that AD anytime soon, as far as I know. Um, but thanks, Metagirl. I always appreciate your questions. Um, hey, this one comes from Scratchy. Scratchy, like itchy and scratchy. They fight, they fight, they fight, they fight, they fight, they fight. Fight, 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 fight. The itchy and scratchy show. Did you ever watch that? Come on, man. Cartoons. Simpsons, right? Um, I love your channel. Uh, question. My local Rolex AD won't sell me a watch because I am not a customer. But how do I become a customer if they won't sell me a watch? I am willing to wait, but to be told they won't sell me a watch is very frustrating. The AD told me to go to the gray market. Outrageous, but I don't trust the gray market, nor do I want a secondhand watch. Okay, that wasn't for the watch ball either. And that's good, because I can answer this straight up, dude. I don't know, man. For one, I don't know where you live, where you're from, what your AD's like, or how you are as a customer, or how you approached your AD. You know, because that all comes into play. And what you're looking for, if you walk in there and you're Again, hypothetically, if you're kind of a dick and you say, I wanted Daytona, I could buy all the Rolex in the store, thing, you're, you're just not going to get anything. Yeah, good, go to the go to the gray market. But if you're cool down to earth and you know you're just genuinely looking for a watch, uh, your Rolex AD will be selling other watches. You know, it's good to talk about watches. I, I can't imagine why they would just straight up tell you to go to the to the gray market or tell you they won't sell you a watch. I don't know the specifics, man. Um, you know, it's very difficult if you know from what you're telling me. I don't know, man. The AD just straight up saying no and go to the gray market just doesn't seem right. There's something a little off about that. Um, you know, you, there's got to be other watches you like, man. You did start a relationship with them. You know, buy something else. Maybe something that that you can't just only like Rolex, man. Really, these. I love. I get it. I love Rolex, and I. But you know, I love other watches too. There's got to be something. You know, just start with something. You know what I mean? And then work your way up. You know, but you can't. You, if you're looking for a Daytona, you're not going to get it. If you're looking for a GMT, you're not going to get it. If you're looking for a Sub, you're not going to get it. Looking for a new Yacht Master Titanium, you're not going to get it. OP, start. Date just start. Thirty six, maybe forty one. All right, start from there. Um, so, I wish you the best of luck in how you're going to go. Uh, how you're going to, you know, figure that one out, man. Um, and I agree, you don't have to have a secondhand watch if you don't want one. Gray market doesn't always sell secondhand. I mean, they generally are secondhand, but they may have not been worn. You know what I mean? Unworn, unworn. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, anyway, I do appreciate your comment, though. Um, I, I wish I could give you a more better answer, but hey. Um, this comes from Paul Thompson. Paul, always appreciate your comments, man, and your questions. Um, I know you live in the UK. Hope the UK is treating you well and hope you're fighting crime because you're a police officer, right? Um, okay, so this was when I turned down uh, my... I was offered the Wimbledon uh, uh, flew to bezel jubilee uh, bracelet and it was a 36 millimeter and I had asked for it and then it came in and I turned it down and a lot of people were like oh you just totally ended your relationship with your AD like, no I didn't <laughs> trust me I didn't it's all good um, and uh, anyway so Paul says yeah I had a similar experience with my Submariner I was offered it but wasn't ready to buy it I just bit the bullet and bought it anyway I'm glad I did because I love it um, maybe the watch ball can give us a final say on whether or not the decision to turn down the Wimbledon was correct. Watch ball, was it was it a, a was a good idea to turn down the the Wimbledon? Uh, in anyone else's specific case, I would have said no. You shouldn't have turned it down. It could definitely jeopardize your relationship with your AD. In your case, because you're special, um, doesn't matter. You did the right thing. And there you have it. I did the right thing for once <laughs> um, cool all right so 
the next uh, cr- cr- next question comes from Davis Prince. Hey man, and he says, "Hey Tony, been a while since I chimed in. Uh, still no one two six seven two zero VTNR, but I just purchased my AD and Omega Moon swatch, and I planned to gift this to him this week. Uh, he mentioned last year how much he wanted one. Uh, really hope he enjoys it. Um, on me, of course." And a question for you, have you ever purchased your AD anything? Another one just for me, not the watch ball. So you're, okay, so you haven't gotten your uh, 126720 right now. That's okay, you'll get it. um, And you just bought your AD a moon swatch. I mean, I hope you have a good relationship with this dude because if you don't and you just bought him a watch, it's kind of a, you know, that's a, that's pretty heavy, you know, to, 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 to give someone that you don't know that well a watch. If I did that, I bought one and one. If I bought one, if I say I bought two, right, and I bought one for myself, I said, "Dude, I wanted you to have this." Yeah, man, it's all good. Um, but just going kind of out of your way to do that. There's a fine line between gifting someone, you know what I mean, and and doing that. You know, if you show up at their door at four in the morning, you know, with a candle outside the door, I bought you a moon swatch. You know what I mean? That's a little creepy, right? But um, yeah, in your case, dude, I don't know. I don't see anything wrong with it, and I'm sure he'll appreciate it. I don't necessarily know if it'll get you your watch any quicker, but uh, it, it might be more solidified that you will get the watch. You know what I mean? Um, and have I bought anything for my AD? No, I haven't actually went out and purchased anything specifically for him. Um, I have given him two Casio G-Shocks, one, uh, both that I have custom painted myself, kind of like those, was it IFL, whatever that company is that paints those. I was, I was doing that with Casio G-Shocks for the, G-Shocks for the fun of it for a while, and I gave him two of those. Um, and he really loves them, so yeah, you know. But I haven't bought anything, you know. I didn't go out and buy him a ring or anything and try to propose, <laughs> you know. Um, so I appreciate your question, man. I appreciate everyone's questions. All right, so the last one's a bit of a rant. I have to do this um, because it's just, I get so tired of fucking assholes. And I'm sorry for the language. Just um, this one comes from King Vader. Um, starts out all nice, you know what I mean? I have my name on all five Rolex ADs from Miami to West Palm. Um, So from Miami to West Palm Beach. Uh, Am I wasting my time or should I go to the gray market? Simple enough question, right? So I respond to him, hey, that's a question I'll answer uh, on my Q&A Friday. And then I get this fucking response back. Never mind. I'll, I, and I didn't write it down. I wish I had because I'm now just paraphrasing whatever. It's like, you know, I'll talk to another YouTube who has the time to answer my question. And I was just like, dude, fine. Then go to the gray market. You know what I mean? And he's like, I have the money. I can, you know, it was, it was one of those real shit. And I was like, dude, who cares? Seriously. You know, it's, it's people like you, dude. You know, I hate to say this. You have your name on 580s list and you're more likely not going to get anything because you probably went in there with a fucking attitude. You went in there probably asking for a Daytona. You probably won't buy anything else. And you're probably that guy that thinks because you have money, you can flash it around. First and foremost, I most likely think you probably don't have any money and you're going to end up getting like a Timex comparable sort of looks like a panda or something. But, you know, when you go in and you start acting like a, a tool, which I believe that you are, I wouldn't be just going off like if I didn't think you were that because judging by the way that you came at me in, in the, uh, the, the, my, whatever the question in my channel, you know, you just come across like you're one of those guys, you're probably self-entitled, privileged, I have money and I'm going to get the watch I want and I've got my name on all five ADs list. Guess what, dude, you're not going to get the watch. So yeah, stick with the gray market. That's where you belong. And go hang out at the, uh, you know, get your Cuban link chain and get your gold and and try to impress someone there because no one in the watch industry really gives a shit if you have money or not because that's not what it's about. Having said that, you guys have a great weekend. I appreciate it.